Good morning, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I am heading down to get some Chipotle. Um, a little, a little different for a start of a morning. I haven't gotten Chipotle in a morning in probably a couple months. I'm not gonna lie. I still get Chipotle, but I usually get Chipotle like later in the day, around like five or six p.m. But I decided I want to try this new hack I've been seeing on TikTok nonstop, and that's basically when you order a taco and then you get a bunch of sides. Based off of the app, I tried doing all the sides that they had in the TikTok video, but it looks like uh, Chipotle already fixed this kind of hack or whatever so they don't let you choose three things on the sides and then two things on the taco so it's not going to be as jam-packed as the ones in the video but but uh i mean for four dollars i'm really wondering what you get it'd be, kind of, it'd be kind of insane so i'm gonna go ahead and try to do this hack even with the hack kind of being fixed and kind of see how big this burrito could be if it's really tiny don't ever do what i'm doing here but i mean for four dollars you can't really lose <laughs> so let's go ahead and go get this thing and then we'll start working on the f30 just a little treat up front normally i don't like to treat myself up front but i want to treat myself up front today why not just got the package the question is is this bussing or disgusting <laughs> i've been watching way too much tiktok <laughs> let's get home and enjoy this all right so i'm not gonna lie this is a tremendous fail <laughs> so they put my chicken and uh, i guess my cheese in here and um those are my three sides. You can't really do much more than that. So unfortunately, this Chipotle hack has officially failed, but I'm gonna go ahead and take apart all this, put it in the bigger tortilla, and see if I have anything else in the house to make this thing a full-size burrito. And at least, you know, we got a good meal out of this. And we're back from eating that burrito. I'm not gonna lie, it was okay. It was okay for $4. I mean, we got pretty much the majority of things we needed to make a burrito, but the reason it was that big to begin with is because I threw in some extra cheese, I had some extra rice in the house, and it's pretty much a rice and cheese burrito to, for the most part. I mean, we had a couple of their sides that they gave us, but long story short, that thing is no longer effective. So I hopped on the train pretty late, unfortunately, and uh, it is what it is. But anyways, on to more important matters. You guys know that the F30 build is gonna be fully transformed, hopefully in the next couple of days. And I really need to get to it. Like, I really wanna be able to transform this car in less than two weeks. I'm talking wrap, I'm talking full body kit, I'm talking exterior, exterior modifications, everything. So the thing we're gonna be knocking out in today's video, we have a beautiful strut brace. I think I'm gonna slap that on in today's video. Um, we also have beautiful M3 fenders. I wanna slap those on as well and then also the M Sport front bumper. So um, for today's video, I do wanna knock out the pretty much the front end of the car. And that being said, we don't really have much room to work right over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into the E91 M3 and move that thing forward and just make a little more space for this car. Also, by the way, I know a lot of you guys mentioned that the exhaust on this car is poking out a little too much. Um, I do know that the stock tips are very long, so it does give us pretty much room to work with. If you guys look right in there, um, yeah, this thing is freaking crazy long. <laughs> <laughs> this muffler sitting right there is just a temporary thing. It's not going to stay there permanently. Um, for the most part, I just need to get it past inspection and then we're probably going to do like a muffler delete or some kind of axle back exhaust. Pretty much the same thing we're doing to the F30. So uh, yeah, that's going to be the goals for this. Again, once we actually get the inspection and everything. To get the E91 M3 certified in California, I need to get it past the bar. And long story short, the bar, there's a phone call appointment, which I have in the 17th. And then after the phone call appointment, they're just pretty much going to tell me everything that I need with the car. Um, and make sure it's insured. Make sure you have moving permits. Make sure have all that stuff so you can legally drive it um make sure that you know it, it is it is gonna pass when it gets there they don't want to waste their time um so yeah if i miss this appointment they actually push it off another month as a penalty i should have a month two months 60 day penalty if i miss this phone call so i can't miss this phone call so yeah that's hopefully coming up on the 17th and after that we'll figure out the actual day we're gonna be taking the car physically down there i'm hoping we get the car wrapped before we actually take it down there but uh yeah we're just gonna have to take it step by step without further ado let's just go ahead and move the car so we can get to work And just like that, guys, we have the bumper with all the pieces to pretty much fully assemble it. And we also have the fenders. I'm actually not going to be putting on the M3 stuff on there, even the uh, the trim pieces that go on the fenders just yet, because we're going to be wrapping the car. Once I actually wrap the car, then I'll slap those in. Same goes with the front bumper. I'm not going to put it on the grills in this episode, just because I want to get everything on the car, wrap it. And then once you have everything wrapped, then we can start slapping on everything. Makes life a whole lot easier. But honestly, the bumper, we might have to take it back off again to actually wrap it. I just want to get the whole body kit on the car, take a picture of it before the wrap and then after the wrap. So I want to get this bumper on regardless so let's just go ahead remove this and this thing <laughs> and then remove these fenders Over 
over here, you have to remove these air ducts on both sides. We also have to remove this bar right over here, um, just because it's gonna get in the way of the M Sport bumper. Once we actually do both of those, we should be able to slap on the front M Sport bumper, but we're not actually gonna be doing that just yet, mainly because we're replacing the fenders as well. Um, so now that we got these two screws off of the bumper, we have the top screws. We also have the screws that go down here, and I think there's some behind the side skirt as well, so we might have to remove the side skirts, but uh, not a big deal for us because we have upgraded side skirts just chilling right there. So finally got both fenders off, we got both side skirts off, we got the front bumper off. Honestly guys, I'm so, so, so happy on how easy it is to remove the fenders on an F30. On the E90 chassis, you actually have to remove this. And that's something I have to, again, remove on the E91 M3 just so I can adjust my fender. It's so stupid on the E chassis, this thing goes all the way down here and it gets in the way of this bolt to remove the fender. So basically, you have to drop this entire thing, lose all your fluids just to get that bolt out, which is so annoying. While on this F30, it clears perfectly. I was able to get that bolt out and the bolt up here, it actually goes from this side. So yeah, this thing can stay. I don't even have to touch it. I don't have to move it. I don't have to remove the fender liner. Super easy. Also, I noticed that the fender liner on this car is like foam. It's not even plastic. It's so weird. But anyways, I'm not complaining. It was even easier to move that thing out of the way. And honestly, this piece right over here, I used to think it was one time use. It basically has a bunch of these like right over here. It's like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but it's basically it looks like a one time use clip. And how it works is, is that you pretty much just punch out this little thing through it so I grabbed this pick tool kind of just pushed right through it picked it out and then it fell in the back of the fender so when I actually got the fender out I was able to collect all three of these and now I have these pieces so I can go ahead put this piece back in put this piece through it and then bada bing bada bang the fender is back to OEM I don't have to use any janky hardware to get it back together like I said guys really happy on everything came apart and since this is a clean title the headlights is where it needs to be the hood is where it needs to be so I'm able to line up the fender perfectly based off of those two things and also the doors of course this is going to come together so nicely I can already anticipate it but anyways um let's go ahead and slap on the fenders first because why not All right guys, so after playing with these for quite a bit now, trying to line them up, this side is finally perfect. These are aftermarket fenders, so when I was trying to move it a little more this way to close in this gap or trying to move it a little bit more towards the hood, it's either gonna open up one side or the other. So I put it pretty much in the center. Both gaps are a little bit bigger than factory, but I mean, it's to be expected with an aftermarket M3 style fender. But in terms of being flush, it is absolutely flush with the doors, absolutely flush with the hood. So I'm super happy about both of those and everything is bolting up exactly where it needs to go. And plus at the same time, this isn't plastic, this is metal. So that's definitely better quality than your typical e-chassis fender. I cannot believe e-chassis fenders are plastic. It's just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, at this point, the last thing we gotta pretty much do is assemble this front bumper and slap on this front bumper. So I am super stoked to do that. So if you guys are wondering like, hey, Noah, you're putting a bunch of conversion pieces, you're doing a bunch of stuff like that. Like, where are you getting all this stuff? When you guys buy the M Sport bumper from Keys Motorsports, you guys get all the little bits and goodies to do a real like M Sport conversion. If you guys just get the bare bumper, you're gonna be stuck with some bad fitment. You're not gonna have actual aerodynamics that when you go see through the grills, if you even have any grills, um, it's just not gonna look right. Um, so long story short, if you guys want the complete kit, make sure you check out Keys Motorsports. Getting all these little things can add up to be more than the bumper cost. So uh, just a little FYI, try to get the whole kit. It's just more practical, more cost effective. And when I mean everything, guys, I mean literally everything comes with the Keys Motorsports M Sport bumpers. It's pretty sick, even the bolts.
guys, check that out. So I'm gonna just go ahead and cue to this cinematic because this is insane. Yeah, guys, it is getting a little light right now, but hopefully in the next video, we're definitely gonna be getting on the side skirts. I wanna get that rear bumper on. I definitely wanna get on the new diffuser that we got as well, the carbon fiber diffuser. Um, again, just start knocking things out for the rear, possibly even the tail lights. Yes, I wanna do the tail lights in the next video as well. So if you guys wanna see the rear end transformation coming up in the next video, make sure to smash that like button. I'm trying to become more active by doing stuff on this car particularly, while we wait for things to come in for the E91 and uh, the new project in the backyard. So I'm very excited to show you guys what that project is when the time comes. But in the meantime, we got some F30 content and uh, I mean, who doesn't like an F30? <laughs> so without further ado, guys, I'll catch you all in the next one. I love you all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.